back and when I when I looked to my left side on the floor I saw one of the shooters back and when I when I looked to my left side on the floor I saw one of the shooters and then um, like I would say 10 inches before that there was a, a kid that was deceased and then I had to exit to go to the field where everybody's at right now so you doing okay yeah all right, so he is doing okay. I want to clarify something that he said. He talked about one of the shooters. Uh, as far as we know, there is only one shooter, and that person was taken into custody uh, after the shooting, which took place here at Appalachian High School around 1030 this morning. Guys? Kevin, I'll ask you the same thing I asked uh, Brittany. And Adam, before we let you go, I just want to ask you this question. Uh, CNN is reporting this now, and it is uh, drawing a lot of ire from parents in this community. And uh, according to law enforcement, there, were, there was a phone call that was made to Appalachian High School early this morning, alerting this, the school staff that there would be five school shootings and Appalachian High School would be one of the first. Uh, there's still no determination who made that phone call, who accepted the phone call, and if the school took any proactive steps. I, I know that you'll be asking those questions too. Well, certainly, and if that really happened, then one would think immediately you would place all of the schools that were mentioned on lockdown until that could be vetted and cleared. Uh, we don't know if that happened here. We know just after 930, that's when reports came in to law enforcement about an active shooter in the school here at Appalachian High School in Barrow County. We don't know, though, when exactly when that lockdown was activated. Was it activated immediately after receiving that call or was it activated once the shooter had access to the building? That's a very important question. We need to know that timeline as well. To that point, I will say I spoke with a parent of a child that attended the elementary school, which is nearby. Uh, he was in the area because they were on lockdown as well when all of this took place. Uh, and he was waiting to reunite with his child. And he mentioned the same thing. He mentioned that he had heard reports that there might be shootings involving multiple schools in the area. So that is certainly something that will be brought up during this news briefing. And we hope to get some new information and some answers for you as soon as authorities address the podium. Director of the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, and we wanted to come back uh, this afternoon and present you with a little more of a timeline of the events that have taken place here today and uh, what we know up to this point with the investigation. At approximately 1020 a.m. this morning, the Barrett County Sheriff's Office uh, received alerts about reports of an active shooter and radio traffic from school resource officers concerning the same concern or having the same concern. Within minutes, law enforcement was on scene as well as two school resource officers assigned here to the school who immediately encountered the subject within just minutes of this report going out. Once they encountered the subject, the subject immediately surrendered to these officers and he was taken into custody. Additionally, what I want you to know as of now, there are four uh, individuals who are deceased from this incident, nine that have been taken to local hospitals with various injuries. Uh, of those that were, have, are deceased, two are students and two are teachers here at the, at the school. The priority right now for us within this investigation is to gather all the facts, to make sure that we're accurate with it because this is a murder investigation. As the sheriff mentioned earlier this morning, the shooter is in custody. His name is Colt, that's C-O-L-T, Gray. He is a 14-year-old student here at the school, G-R-A-Y. He is a 14-year-old student here at the high school. Again, he has been taken into custody. Uh, he, is, he will be charged with murder and he will be tried as an adult and uh, handled as an adult. We're coordinating these charges and obviously this investigation with District Attorney Brad Smith, who is the District Attorney for the Piedmont Judicial Cir uh, Circuit here. Since early this morning, we talked with you and since the incident occurred, numerous interviews have been taking place through our investigation with students, faculty, uh, as well as any other witnesses that we could identify. Law enforcement had a very, very swift response to this incident once the, the incident was, was determined that there was a concern here. Those resources, whether it was in that response or throughout this investigation to assist, came obviously from the sheriff's office here, from uh, other local law enforcement agencies, state law enforcement agencies, and uh, uh, federal law enforcement agencies as well. Uh, to include, not to be left out, multiple EMS personnel, multiple fire personnel uh, and agencies, those agencies responded here as well today. And I am extremely grateful, as I know the sheriff is, for that quick response and the partnerships of working here together uh, with what all has gone on. Currently, from the investigative perspective, we have crime scene agents and, and other special agents from the GBI from close to a dozen of our different uh, work units from across the state uh, that have responded here today to work on this investigation. Again, collecting evidence, conducting interviews, and so forth. I do want to pass this along, uh, that if anyone has any information 
uh, that wants to be passed on concerning this investigation, that they can do that anonymous, anonymously at our tip line at 1-800-597-TIPS or 1-800-597-8477. They can also report this on, uh, by downloading the See Something, Send Something app. That can be done by Android or Apple phones, either one. Uh, to, to, they need to report any, uh, any uh, tips concerning this investigation. Uh, let me close out before I turn this over to the sheriff and, and let you just remind you that this is still a very active investigation. There is still a lot that is very fluid. Uh, there's still a lot of interviews to be conducted uh, that will continue on into the night as well as, as crime scene work and collecting and, and gathering evidence. But what more is more important for me to mention here to you is, is my heartfelt uh, sympathy to uh, the parents, the students that were, in, that were here today. Uh, regardless of, of where they were in the school, this has got a great impact uh, on them as well as on this community. Uh, my thoughts and prayers along with everybody standing behind me and every law enforcement agency in this state and many, I will, I will tell you, around this country, uh, they are in our thoughts and prayers. And we will continue with that. Uh, we ask for your patience uh, as we continue through this and we'll continue to try to give you as many updates with information as we can to keep you informed. Uh, but thank you for being here. I'm now going to turn it over to Barrett County Sheriff Judge Smith. Thank you. Director, would you spell your name, please? H-O-S-E-Y. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dallas LaDuff. I'm the superintendent of Barrett County School System. I want to thank the Bear County Sheriff's Office and all of our law enforcement partners for their swift response today, along with that of our staff. I'd also like to thank our community for their response and patience as we work to reunify them, stu uh, students with their families here today and secure the rest of our school campuses. Our schools will be closed for the remainder of this week as we cooperate fully with law enforcement to get answers to the many questions that we all have about this incident here today. But as we are closed, our central offices will remain open where we will have grief counseling available for our community uh, every day this week and thereafter as we support each other through this terrible event. Well, shortly, if, if someone decides to take a firearm into a school where kids are given a, an education or entitled to an education and want to harm others, to me it's hateful. Sheriff, can you talk about the initial interaction between whoever was able to stop the shooter? Can you describe that to us? How did it go down? What exactly happened first? Obviously the shooter was armed. And our school resource officer engaged him and the shooter quickly realized that if he did not give up that it would end with an ois or an officer involved shooting he gave up got on the ground and the deputy took him into custody sheriff any idea how the weapon got inside the school and was there any warning that this was going to happen not that i'm aware of again very early and we're still looking into that whether or not or how he obtained it and how he got it in the school sure. Sure. Have you been in touch at all with his parents or his family to learn more about what led up to these moments we have any information you can share? No. What kind of weapon it, was it? Seems like you have a, it seems like you have a large Hispanic population. Have you been able to communicate with the people in their language to make sure that everybody knows what's happening? Yes, sir, I have. The school the school and our office has uh, people that speak in Spanish, and they have spoke to those folks as well. Yes. Sheriff, is the shooter speaking with the law enforcement now? Sorry. Is the shooter talking? Is he saying why? The shooter was interviewed, and he is he was speaking with our investigators early earlier, along with the GBI. How is that helping the sheriff? It is, it is helping our investigation. Sheriff, Sheriff is this... of threatening calls perhaps made to the school prior to the shooting? That None happened? that I'm aware of. What, were all you? nine injured victims shot? In some capacity, yes. Sheriff, can you tell us about the two individuals deceased and was one targeted? We don't know of any targets at this point. Sheriff, what kind of weapon was used? Have you identified the weapon? We're not identify we have not identified that at this point, no. Sheriff, is there a Sheriff, connection? Is a, this is the last the, question I'm going to take. Sheriff, Sheriff is there a connection here? between the shooter and the victims? None that I'm aware of. I know, that, I know that you have a lot of questions about the student and that we mentioned that we identified earlier. Keep in mind that, that, that that's part of our investigation, that we're looking into every aspect of that individual, his connection here at the school. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, he was a student here. So as part of our investigation, we're looking into all aspects, current and prior, uh, involving that individual. Can you tell us how many rounds were fired? Can you tell us how many rounds were fired? Do what? The shooter, the shooter was. is a student, yes. Student. When can we expect the We do not know how many rounds. Director, has that shooter had any past history with law enforcement? From now, this is the information that we have. It is an active investigation. I assure you, we will. We do plan to come back out here in a couple of hours. It, please make sure you're following the GBI X page. That's where we're going to be putting the updates. If there's anything that, that's new, we'll make sure that we share that information. It's still very early. Investigators have a lot of work to do. We appreciate your patience. Do expect another in-person news conference out here in the next few hours. Monitor the X page, and we will be sure to update you accordingly. Thank you.